Liha. In this video, we'll discuss the design of a combinational circuit that does a common arithmetic task, multiplication. Be careful to not confuse a multiplier with a multiplexer. A multiplier does a task like 4 times 7, but a multiplexer is used to route data. We'll demonstrate an unsigned 4-bit multiplier here. To design our 4-bit multiplier, we need to reflect on the algorithm for longhand multiplication. Technically, when two numbers are being multiplied, the first number is called the multiplicand, and the second number is called the multiplier. We'll represent these with the variables a and b. Remember that a actually contains 4 bits, so there would be separate electrical signals for a3, a2, a1, and a0. Now let's look at one specific worked example with a equals 0, 1, 0, 0, and b equals 0, 1, 1, 0. Note that each bit in b is color coded to match with its corresponding partial product. We begin with computing a partial product from the least significant bit in b, this red 0. Anything times 0 equals 0. So, this partial product is simply four zeros. Next, we compute a partial product from the next bit in B, which is this blue one. Anything times one equals itself, so the A value is replicated exactly on this line. Notice that this partial product is shifted to the left by one bit to align it with the corresponding bit in B. With two partial products complete, we add them to compute the running sum. After that, we compute the next partial product from this green one. Again, since we are multiplying by one, the result is simply the original value of a. Also, we make sure to shift this partial product over by one bit. We then update the running sum by adding in this new partial product. With one bit remaining in b, we run through the same process compute the partial product, shift it to the appropriate position, and then add it to the running sum. Now this running sum gives us the final result, the product of A and B. A quick check by converting to decimal gives us confidence in the result. 4 times 6 equals 24. Let's take note of a couple patterns in this algorithm. First, there are only two possibilities for a partial product. If b equals 0, the partial product is 0, 0, 0, 0. If b equals 1, the partial product equals a. This is a nice advantage of binary. Second, we have this repeated cycle of compute partial product, then compute running sum. We already have a device that can do 4-bit addition for us. We'll need to explore how we can compute the partial product. Finally, a shifting occurs before adding in the next partial product. I have found that most people think of this as a shifting to the left of the new partial product. But, just as valid and more helpful for our circuit, is to think of this as a shifting to the right of the old running sum. Bit 3 gets added as bit 2. Bit 2 gets added as bit 1. Bit 1 gets added as bit 0. And, here's the fun part, bit 0 gets shifted completely out of the running sum and is taken directly down to the final product. Notice how that happens here with the red 0, then the blue 0, and then the trailing green 0. We said a minute ago that we need a circuit strategy for computing a partial product. This slide demonstrates two methods for performing one-bit multiplication with logic devices. The first takes an SOP approach. Given a truth table with inputs A and B, this output column shows what the results would be for A times B. The only time the product is 1 is when both inputs are 1, so the Boolean expression is simply A and B. So one-bit multiplication can be accomplished with an AND gate. This is one case where arithmetic and logic operations appear the same. Another method is to use a 2 to 1 multiplexer. This seems more complicated at first and feels like overkill for 1-bit multiplication, but 
It simplifies things when expanding to four bits, so stay with me. Notice how we wire the inputs. We let the B value in the multiplication act as the data select. We let A connect to A, and we connect ground to the B input. This ground provides a constant logic zero signal. What happens when we multiply by zero? The output is guaranteed to be zero. So this data select switch would choose the logic zero coming from ground. What happens when we multiply by one? The output equals A. So this data select switch would choose the input A value. This is a nifty reinterpretation of a MUX. Okay, the foundation is laid. Now let's see a circuit. Each of these devices labeled adder is identical to the 4-bit adders we have built earlier in the course. I've simply stretched out the device symbol so it lines up more conveniently. Also, I have not included the hex keyboard for A. Physically, there would be an input for A, with wires connected to all of the various AND gates. The least significant bit would tie into each of these A0s, the next bit to each of the A1s, and so on. For visual clarity, I left those out of this slide. All right, what is happening here? First, we need to compute partial products from each bit in B. The first one, from B0, is accomplished with this set of four AND gates. Each AND gate does one bit of multiplication. We use four of them, one for each bit in A. The second partial product from B1 is accomplished with the next set of AND gates. Then the pattern continues down below for the later bits. Then we need to compute running sums. The first two partial products are passed in to this four bit adder. That adder makes the first running sum, which is then added to the next partial product, through the following adder. And that result is added to the next partial product in the final adder. Do you see how this is the same procedure as longhand multiplication? But we must not forget about the bit shifts. Notice how each bit in this first partial product is shifted down. A3 enters the adder as bit 2. A2 enters as bit 1. A1 enters as bit 0 and A0 shifts out of the addition entirely and works its way directly to the final product. This ground here is simply because we must have some logic value on all input pins, and we are guaranteed to always have a zero here. After the adder, the downshift continues. For example, output bit 2 becomes input bit 1 for the next adder. The least significant bit of the running sum is added to nothing else and goes directly to the final product. And this pattern continues one more time leading into the final adder. At the end of the circuit, we receive an 8-bit product from the multiplication of two 4-bit numbers. In the final slide here, we make one tweak to the circuit on the previous slide, replacing the first set of AND gates with a 4-bit MUX. As mentioned earlier, we can use a MUX to act as a multiplier. We connect the A values to the A ports, we connect ground to all of the B ports, and we use the B0 bit as the data selector. If B0 is 0, the ground inputs are selected, providing a partial product of 0, 0, 0, 0. If B0 is 1, then all four bits of the given A value are selected. We could, and probably should, continue this pattern and replace each set of AND gates with a four-bit MUX. That would provide us a consistent and clean layout using just seven device symbols rather than needing to deal with the internal gates. But of course, we must be careful to connect the appropriate pins of those devices. The same pattern could hold for a larger number of bits. However, the pattern does require a large number of gates and thus a large hardware cost. So for a multiplication of larger numbers, say 64 bits, sequential circuits are often used. We'll discuss those later in the course.